Welcome to the Real View Podcast, where Ohio realtors connect you to innovators and influencers, keeping you with the real view of real estate. Whether you're a broker, agent, first time home buyer, industry leader, or just happen to stumble upon our podcast today, you can expect to hear tips, tools, tricks, interesting information, and so much more from the experts in Ohio's real estate game. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Real View Podcast. I'm your host, Allison Wiley. Joining us today, I'm super excited to have them on. They are our fellow Ohio Realtors staff, our friends here, our very own attorneys. I'm not going to say their full titles um, because they are quite lengthy, but they are taking over um, for Peg and Lori, who previously held um, our legal counsel roles at Ohio Realtors. Their names are Stephen McCoy and Todd Book. Stephen and Todd, Welcome on to the show. So happy to have you guys on. Oh, thank you. With you. Yeah. Oh, thanks so much for having us. Yeah, we're super excited. And like I mentioned, we we have had Peg and Lori on this podcast. Um, I believe we had them back on in the spring and they announced their well-deserved retirement from Ohio Realtors. And um, they were, we all know how beloved and respected they were here um, on this podcast as well as in the real estate world as a whole. But we are so happy to have you guys on and you have already um, really taken the reins and have ran with it and are doing an amazing job uh, with us so far. And it's time to introduce you to our online listening community. So super excited to have you guys. Welcome aboard. Um, Before we get started and talking a little bit about you guys, what you do and kind of your work at Ohio Realtors and what you're seeing I have to ask our signature question that I ask all of the guests who join us on the Real View podcast, which is, since the show is called The Real View, what is the best view that you have ever seen? Stephen, why don't we start with you? Sure. Yeah. Thanks so much uh, for having us, Allison. It's a real privilege to be on this podcast. I've been a a listener for the past few months, so it's uh, great to be on this side of the microphone. So yeah, I I, I thought about this question because I noticed this was asked in all the podcasts, and I think that's a great theme here. So I I would say my favorite view, I really gave this some thought, was uh, a few years ago, uh, my grandfather, uh, actually, who lives out in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, he's a broadcaster for the Phoenix Suns. He was honored and inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, for the Phoenix Suns organization, and as part of that, uh, I flew out to Phoenix and I was actually on the court uh, during halftime uh, when they obviously introduced him and uh, uh, gave him a, a, a really large grand piano as a gift from uh, the Phoenix Suns organization. But just being on the court during halftime, 18,000 fans, it was a packed house, you know, cheering for your grandfather and your family. It was just a a really awesome experience and and something that you know you look out on the crowd and it's something that gives you goosebumps uh, every time you kind of think about it. So I, I'd say being on the court during halftime uh, honoring my grandfather was uh, probably my my best view of my life so far. That's pretty cool. I mean, probably not a lot of people can say they've been on an NBA court and honored, you know, that way. So that's that's super cool. Um, thank you for sharing that. Todd, what about you? Well, I'm, you know, I'm like Stephen. I knew you were going to ask this question, so I thought a little bit about it. And uh, at first, I was thinking about locations, you know, like Yellowstone Falls and at Yellowstone, or the lighting ceremony at uh, Mount Rushmore. But really, probably my favorite view of all time was after my first child was born. It was 21, well, 23 years ago now. A few minutes after birth, I looked at her and actually was able to look, and she looked back, and our eyes connected, and that was probably the best view I've ever had was just that, that experience of, of realizing that you're a grown up now and you've got some things to take care of. Yeah. You're responsible for somebody else now. <laughs> it's it's real. <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. That's really sweet. Love it. Thanks for playing along on my uh, fun game. Okay. So I want to hear a little bit more about you guys, um, what you do, what your roles are. Talk about your time at Ohio Realtors so far. I mean, I know it's been a few months now coming up on a year in January. Is that right? That's that's right. I think I started maybe a week or so before Stephen did. This is Todd, by the way. And uh, but first off, before I get into that, you talked a little bit, Allison, about Peg and Lori and just how great they are and were. And we saw that firsthand as we were traveling around the state earlier this year on Peg's uh, farewell tour. And uh, just the 
the accolades and the gifts and just the well wishes she receives. So she's done this association a great job over the years. And same with Lori. I mean, she's very well loved both. Uh, so Stephen and I knew coming into this, we had some big shoes to fill. But yeah, we got started in January and really enjoyed learning more about realtors and what they do. I mean, obviously from my practice previously, I've been engaged with uh, realtors uh, quite a bit, but never really from this perspective. And so it's been a real learning uh, opportunity for me and a real privilege to get to know some folks that, you know, previously dealing with lawyers predominantly, you know, lawyers are a little tougher breed. And it, it's nice to be working with realtors because they do have, look like they're looking for ways to make deals happen. And all the times they're willing to like cut their commission or give this away or give that away. It's just like, you don't normally see that in, in what I was doing previously. And that's kind of refreshing. Love that. No, that's, that's awesome. And I'm glad, you know, you gave the props to Peg and Lori as well. And um, you guys have done such a great job of, of, stepping in and just really running with it from the jump. And the cool thing is, which I think was great, was that you guys actually worked with Peg and Lori for a while before both of their retirements, um, which I think was really great. Were you able to kind of gain, you know, more knowledge and insight through work, being able to work with them? What was that process like? Oh, absolutely, Allison. And this is Steven, by the way. And um, yeah, what a, what a tremendous learning experience. I, you know, I, I wish we could, you know, have kept them around, you know, a little bit longer, really as long as we could. Learning with them, working with them, you know, they they are just a wealth of knowledge and experience that, you know, a lot of which is not written down in the code. It's not written down in policy. It's it's just those long years of experience and and dealing with these issues that um, you know, frankly, these are our members see every day. But yeah, major props uh, to both Peg and Lori, and um, yeah, having them on board for at least a few months uh, was uh, was a great learning experience, uh, certainly on my end. John, and I know if you remember, Stephen, we actually would have about every week we would try to meet with one of or both of them to kind of like just download what they had. We each had names for the for the little uh, get-togethers. Which, if you remember, we had lessons with Lori. And pearls from Peg were the two types. That's what we would call it. We'd have those uh, sessions with them, and we'd spend a half hour, forty-five minutes. Just they would download just the different experiences they've had and and common questions that they receive, and it was great. I just wish I'd have turned on the video or audio recorder when that was going on because more than once I've thought I know Peg told me that, but I have to go find it again because I I didn't remember it. No, I, I think that's great. You guys had that time with them and, and how cool that you were able to, to learn before we sent them into a happy and long retirement. Um, Stephen, what a little, tell us a little bit more about you, what your roles are, some of the things that um, you do at Ohio Realtors for the members who may have not had the chance to meet you all yet. Tell us a little bit about um, you, what you do, and kind of what we can expect from you as our new legal counsel. And both of you can answer that, but Stephen, why don't you go ahead and kick it off? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, a lot of it's in the title of uh, my role here, which is Vice President of Legal and Regulatory Affairs, uh, which is very long, uh, but it's it, it's it's got a meaning behind it. So, uh, I'll be primarily working, uh, obviously, on the legal hotline. Uh, that's a, a tremendous resource uh, for a lot of our members. They get to call in uh, if they're just having trouble remembering certain rules, requirements uh, that are uh, required of them under the license law or administrative code. Uh, we answer those on behalf of all the brokers in the state. I'll be taking on the property management uh, aspect. Uh, Lori Garland was uh, the stalwart there who running the property management forum and the property management issues. And so I'll be stepping into those shoes and uh, hopefully providing a great service that Lori had provided for a number of years. I'll be working with Todd on uh, legal action and uh, the legal action forum that we you know typically have at the convention. We're very excited for that. It's a, a great meeting and great resource as well. Uh, another aspect is the legal education. So we we go around and we teach a lot of continuing education classes around the state, whether it's Cincinnati, Dayton, Cleveland, Toledo, Columbus, was it Cambridge and St. Clair's, well, those areas as well. Um, so every part of the state, you know, we try and get out and, and teach at least one class, but we've got several coming up, which we'll get into in a little bit. But so legal education uh, is very big uh, that, that we like to provide for our, our, our members here. We also provide legislative support for our, our chief uh, lobbyist, Beth Wamless. Uh, so we will assist with bill review, giving opinions uh, as to whether it'll impact our members in a negative or positive way and what our 
position should be on those bills. Also serving as a liaison to the Ohio Division of Real Estate. So, you know, being that bridge between Ohio Realtors, all of our members, 37,000 plus members and the division is such a big connection. And it's, it's a great honor to, to, to serve in that role. So, yeah, you'll be looking uh, to hear us more on the legal hotline. So you'll be hearing our voices more. And also, uh, we hope to see a lot of our members at our continuing education classes as well. Yeah. Anything um, more, Todd? Anything that Stephen missed or didn't hit on you want to mention? No, I think you pretty much covered it. The only thing I would say is that, you know, where he's going to be doing a lot of the property management issues, I'll probably be doing more on the legislative front because my job title is equally as long as uh, Vice President of Legal Services and Legislative Affairs. And I think that that's kind of a natural, I think, for, for me, given the fact that I used to be a state representative for, for eight years back in the in the aughts and then served as a lobbyist for, for several years as well before I came to work with the realtors. So hoping to use those connections and that experience to, to make sure that, that we're well taken care of and well uh, protected at the legislative world. I know Beth does a wonderful job. It's kind of amazing some of the things she's able to get done. And just however we can can help her in that process uh, going forward is something I'm looking forward to. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things I'm excited, you know, to um, have you guys involved with too is doing a little bit of um, some marketing and communication stuff. I know the number one request that we always get from our members uh, from the communications department is more legal stuff, more legal stuff, more legal stuff. So we are looking forward to having you guys um, contribute in a big way on that aspect as well, doing some articles, um, doing some social media, maybe some Facebook Live, some video recordings, um, and of course, having you as a regular guest um, on the podcast. I know with Peg and Lori, we were into about quarterly updates uh, with the legal team. So hopefully we can continue that with you guys and our listeners can get um, this great time and information from you. So excited about that. You guys are very, very busy, got a lot of responsibilities, but it's, it's awesome to have you guys on board. Oh, yeah, absolutely. As long as you'll have us, we'd, we'd be happy to, to be on the podcast. It's a real treat. A hundred percent. So, OK, I kind of want to head into the legal update part of the show now that we know a little bit more about you guys and what you're going to be doing here at Ohio Realtors. Um, I think, Stephen, we'll start with you. I know you have some updates with us for the statewide purchase contract. So why don't you go ahead and um, let us know a little bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, on the forms update. So, the Forms Committee has been working for, I'd say, over 20, probably 24 months at this point uh, on developing a statewide residential purchase contract. So this is huge. Hundreds of hours have been put into it by all of the committee members, been chaired currently by Noreen Marlowe. So big shout out to her for all of her work and all of the members on the committee has done uh, it's been a, a long process, like I said, hundreds of hours. Sometimes uh, uh, our meetings would be over, what does closing mean? You know, the kind of very minutia detail of a contract that actually has pretty significant uh, impact on transactions. And, you know, one of the kind of interesting learning curves of doing a purchase contract that's statewide is incorporating all of the different areas of the state's practices, because uh, we all kind of do things a little bit differently. Some Sometimes we do things a little differently in Cleveland, as opposed to Columbus, as opposed to Cincinnati and Dayton, a lot of different real estate practices. Uh, so incorporating all of those, understanding all of those, putting it into a single document was a arduous and long task, but uh, it, it, very excited for it. At the moment, we have been reviewing, doing basically a final read through of the purchase contract. Uh, so we actually expect to have a final version of it ready for our members to view uh, early next year. Uh, so that that's that's kind of my preliminary expectation for where where we are with it. But very proud of it. The number of hours, the volunteers on that committee. Just want to give a huge shout out to everyone and all the time that's been spent. But you know, a lot of uh, a lot of what we'll be doing next year is you know teaching uh, and teaching this purchase contract for our members because it's not going to be mandatory. But you know, I gosh, you know, when it, when you take a look at it, you'll see that it's a really nice product. It's been drafted by you know several attorneys, several several real estate brokers that are very active uh, in the state. So we think it's a very very great product that uh, our, our members will be able to use as part of their practice but yeah we're at, we're at the very close to the finish line and we're very excited for the rollout uh, next year 
No, that's super excited. And just to um, reemphasize um, the time and detail that's been spent on this. I mean, I'll see on our office calendar the meetings you guys have. And these are like hours and hours and hours of meetings a day on this. So I appreciate, you know, everyone's involvement and just the thought and time and energy you've given uh, to put out a really great product. Um, it's, it's much appreciated and it does not go unnoticed. And um, I know we are all anxiously awaiting to see the final product coming up in early 2023. Very exciting. Something to um, look forward to. So um, thank you for that, Stephen. Todd, and I know you have... Um, a little bit of updates and things that you are seeing from your side of things to share with us as well. What do you have for us? Well, from a legislative perspective, you know, the, right now they're all the, the state senators and state reps and uh, the statewide law office holders are predominantly focused on getting reelected. So it's pretty quiet across the street. But there was a lot of activity before they left for, for the summer. And they passed one bill, very important bill for realtors, is House Bill 126, dealing with the ability of school districts in particular to challenge property valuations. And it really limited the ability of school districts to do that going forward, which is, you know, a good thing for, for realtors to and folks that are involved in, in property development activities. So it's uh, that was a, a big heavy lift and something that was taken care of uh, right before they broke for summer. Seems to be hot topics now is what's going to happen in the short term rental world. Uh, there's some movement about Airbnbs and how uh, if local communities should be able to to regulate that activity a little bit more than what they they are at this point, and whether that should be something that the state should co-opt and, and say we're not going to allow you to regulate in in that regard. So that's a hot topic that we're looking at for lame duck and what's going to happen in that in that world as well. This episode of The Real View is brought to you by the Ohio Association of Community Colleges. Ohio's network of community colleges provides accessible training that accommodates the busy lifestyles of aspiring real estate professionals at half the price of a traditional university. With convenient locations in every part of the state, as well as online options, Ohio's community colleges are your smart choice for pre-licensing education. For more details or to start the journey to a real estate career, Visit the education page at ohiorealtors.org and then click on the pre-licensed course locations. From the legal hotline standpoint, has there been any major themes or questions kind of that you guys have been seeing come through? Has there been any that you're kind of seeing on a on a repetitive basis? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of start with that. Um, so yeah, I, I think there are a few themes. I, I think Every day we hear something new. Um, so while we we do hear something new every every day, but you know some of that's part of our limited experience thus far at the association. But some of the situations I, I'm very surprised that uh, agents will get themselves into, not necessarily in a negative way, but you know a lot of that's led by their clients. But so I, I would say one of the biggest topics are disclosure issues. You know, should we disclose this? We just learned about that. And there's there's one kind of sub area of disclosures that I think Todd has kind of taken an interest in with uh, with respect to disclosures um, along the lines of ghosts. Todd, you want to fill that? Fill oh, I love that? a good and the, and like we're we're coming up on spooky season. It's almost Halloween going to be Halloween in a couple of weeks. I love a good ghost story. Yeah, I want to hear more. <laughs> well, I wish I had some good ones, and that's what whenever Peg kind of said you're going to be the. The person that talks about stigmatized properties, which is the kind of the, the legal or the inside term on, on what we're talking about. And that's what I was originally thinking. Oh, this is really cool. We're going to be talking about ghosts and whether places are haunted and things. And that's true. I mean, that's really a question of whether that's something that has to be disclosed. And, but what's unfortunate, it's really become more of a discussion about certain bad things have happened in a home, unfortunately, because of the high number of opioid of overdoses in the state, not just in Ohio, but around the country, you're having more of that where people will pass away unexpectedly in a home. And the question is, you know, what do you have to disclose to any potential buyers and whether it's a material fact that impacts the, the property? So just a lot of questions along those lines that we we hear. Uh, one thing I know, Stephen, that we've I've been getting a lot of phone calls recently on wholesaling. This idea of people that oh, yeah. are not actually they go in and contract to buy, to buy the property, but their whole goal all along is just to sell that contract to somebody else for a profit. 
And um, the question is, you know, should you be licensed to be able and a realtor have a realtor license to be able to be engaged in that kind of activity? Right now, there is no such requirement. And I'm not sure if the, the legislators are willing to put that type of requirement on. We're seeing that in some areas of the country where states are saying that to engage in wholesaling, you also have to be a licensed realtor, which, to be honest, a lot of the folks that are doing it now are licensed, but there are some that are not licensed. And I'm sure we've all heard of or seen the, the videos that are out there about the latest get rich quick scheme, which is, you know, become a wholesaler. and um, pay somebody a, a monthly fee to be for them to be your coach or your mentor as you go through that process. We, you know, we're looking at that issue and we get a lot of phone calls on, on in that regard because you got folks that are trying to turn a, a buck or make a buck, which is not a bad thing, but they're not licensed. And the question is, is are they really uh, looking out for anybody's interest other than their, than their own? And that's something we're, we're looking into. I know um, Beth has mentioned that wholesaling um, before, too. I know that's something she definitely has an eye on, and she's brought it up numerous times, and we will continue to um, watch that and, and give more information as um, as it becomes available. And then I know, and I had another question as, as I was listening to you guys, um, and Stephen, you mentioned um, the work with the division, and I know we have a new superintendent. Um, she is joining us on a podcast here in just a couple of weeks, so really excited to have her on. Anything we can expect from the division? Um, any big updates or things that you're seeing um, from that side of things? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we we had a, a Todd and I had a chance to meet with Daphne Hawk. She's the new superintendent. We had a chance to meet with her over Zoom just to introduce ourselves and you know start discussing some basic issues that we're seeing. And very sharp, very sharp and, and intelligent person. And so we're, we're very excited to have a, a fellow realtor, you know, step into the shoes uh, of Ann Pettit, who had served for many, many years uh, that everyone knew uh, very well. So yeah, we're, we're looking forward to working with her and kind of getting her perspective on some of the pending issues such as, you know, e-filing for license transfers and, um, you know, making things more easy for our members. I think that's that's one focus that we really want to emphasize with the, di with the division. We do expect them also to start increasing uh, some of the uh, back-end things that they're working on, like the license transfers, but also uh, on the investigation side, on the investigation side, we expect them to add more staff to the investigative side and and to ba basically look into more complaints. So uh, we do expect some you know more enforcement uh, or at least some more investigating. But um, you know I think you know at the end of the day that's a, a good good uh, function of the division is you know regulating the profession and enforcing the rules. So, but you know I think a lot of our members don't get into those positions, but. Uh, you know, it is something that we look forward to working with the division on. Yeah, and to, to follow up on that, we were actually just at the latest commission meeting where they announced that they were hiring four new staff in the investigative role. So, and you could tell that there was a sense of excitement in, in that room that they were at now going to be able to do some things. Because I've heard this just in my limited time, that there really hasn't been a lot of oversight, maybe because of COVID or whatever else that was going on. Uh, and some people thought pe that folks were getting away with things or it was a little bit of the wild, wild west. It appears there may be a new sheriff in town when it comes to that type of a situation. There may be more investigations going on. So we're, uh, that's yet to be seen. But it, you can tell in that room that they were excited to have uh, the ability to hire some investigators. Yeah, exciting, exciting things. I know we are all anxiously awaiting those transfers in the new electronic system um, for the division. So hopefully uh, more to come on that. Really, really exciting stuff. Okay, I want to hear a little bit about what you guys have upcoming in October. I know you're going to be um, hosting some classes and things like that. Why don't you tell us about what you have planned maybe for the rest of this year and then even heading into 2023? And whoever wants to to take that question, go for it. <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't have the particular dates in front of me, so I'll talk for a little while while Stephen, I'm sure, is trying to yeah, I'll look those up. looking that up right now. But yeah. I didn't realize that um, Gary... A moon, the the person here at the realtors that is responsible for doing a lot of the CE would would use us quite as much as he has, and I I feel like he's starting to abuse us a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> is he getting is he getting taking advantage of you guys a little yeah. bit? <laughs> yeah, I've, I'm just kidding. He's that's his job, and we know that that's part of our function as well is to go out and 
let people know what's going on and make sure that they get the necessary CD so they can continue to do what what they do and make a, a living and help the people of the state. So, uh, but yeah, we have, I think five or six that I'm aware of between now and the end of the year, different updates. And Stephen, hopefully I've, I've killed enough time now that you can tell folks the dates and things. Yeah, well done, Todd. You're, you can always <laughs> fill, uh, fill in some space uh, when needed. Um, yeah, we've got a couple of classes coming up. We're going to be hitting uh, 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 three classes in the third week of October. Um, so starting October 17th, we'll be in Westerville for a broker management CE. On Tuesday the 18th, we'll uh, be at a broker summit. And then let's see, on the 19th, uh, we'll be teaching a class avoiding legal pitfalls in Licking County. Uh, October 26th, we'll be teaching avoiding legal pitfalls in uh, for the Ashland Board of Realtors. And then November 2nd, uh, we'll be down in Cincinnati teaching a brokerage management class, uh, which which would be a fantastic time. Really looking forward to all those classes. Yeah, um, us too. I know, and our members always appreciate um, when we have events in their area. So really great that you guys are going to be out there. I believe you can sign up or register for for all of those now. Make sure to check out the OhioRealtors.org website, and I'm sure you can see all of the details and information that Stephen just shared with us. And then heading into 2023, what what fun stuff do you guys have uh, for us next year? Oh gosh, um, lots of things, and I'm sure we'll learn. Uh, more about them in the coming weeks, but I, I know we'll be teaching more CE classes. So you guys can definitely expect uh, to see us on the calendar teaching your CE classes. We just got done with our industry updates. So we we taught about seven sessions, one of them being uh, virtual. Uh, so we offered that as, a, as an option for our members, but uh, I would definitely expect more CE classes, more articles. Um, we've been kind of keeping track of some of the big topics, uh, and we're we're keeping track of those so that we can draft up some some good articles for you all. And as we mentioned before, the purchase contract that is going to be such a big piece that we're going to be helping rolling out with training classes, uh, seminars, you know, likely some videos or articles. So that is going to be such a big piece. Uh, definitely, uh, I, I would say most of next year will, will will last. So very much looking forward to that. Yeah, and, and uh, you're right, Stephen, about the the purchase agreement. And you know, I forget what commercial it was, but you know, the ragu, I think it was. They asked if the garlic. It's in there. It's in there. This this contract, it's all in there, and it's it's long, right? And uh, doesn't mean you have to use all all parts of it, but it is. Uh, it'll be a lot for people to to learn and use, and it'll cover almost all situations that may come before them as they're you know negotiating deals. So. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a, a big thing for us. One other thing that we're looking at from my, our library history, some of these articles date back several years. So we're going to go through the process of looking over those, updating them to make sure that uh, that they're current with what's happening uh, legislatively and legally. So people can not, they're not, they can't rely on them now, but even feel more secure that they have a fresher date on them so that they've been reviewed and people realize that they're it's still good law, as they say in law school. There you go. Lots to look forward to in the next co coming months and the next year. Super excited um, for all that you guys are working on and will continue to work on. Um, any last things you want to share before we wrap up here today? I just said, you know, it's been great to get to know folks uh, already. And I think that's going to continue as the months go. And please, you know, it's, it's I always enjoy talking to people on the on the hotline. I know sometimes they're calling under stressful situations, and we, we try to, you know, take that into fact consideration as we're talking with them, obviously. But you know, as as we run into each other across the state, please feel free to introduce yourselves to Stephen and myself. That way, we it's a lot easier to talk to a friend whenever you're on a, in a stressful situation. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, getting to know you know a lot of people on the hotline and in person so definitely come on up to us after class or at the convention or any of our events and uh, we'd be happy to get to know you more and that way we can put a face to some of your voices thank you yeah absolutely and um thank you guys again for joining me on the podcast i look forward to having you back um as a guest um in another couple months here can't wait to um have you guys join me again thank you so much for sharing this wonderful information that you've shared with us today and to all of our listeners thank you guys for tuning in we'll talk to you next week 
Thank you for listening to The Real View. That wraps up today's episode. You can keep up with the latest on the podcast at ohiorealtors.org slash The Real View and on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Have questions, comments, or suggestions? We want to hear from you. Email us at podcast at ohiorealtors.org. We'll see you next time. Hey, Ohio Realtors, register now for the fourth annual Broker Summit happening October 18th in Westerville, Ohio. Plus, make sure to join us for the all new Team Summit happening the day before the Broker Summit. That's right, two straight days of learning and networking just for you. Don't miss out on this important opportunity. Register today by visiting ohiorealtors.org.